Today, we're going to talk about communication protocols. What are they, and how do they work in industrial automation? Just like you or I need a common language to communicate, different devices on an industrial network do as well. This language is called a protocol. The protocol specifies the requirements or format that each device must conform to during communication. An industrial device then uses these requirements to form a well-structured message. In a way, communication protocol is a bit like sending a letter. When we send a letter, we have to specify our name and address on the envelope so that the person receiving the letter knows who the message came from. We also have to make sure that we write their name and address so that the message can be sent to the proper location. Next, we fill our envelope with the letter containing the information that we wish to send, and then certify this message by placing a stamp on our envelope. Now that we understand the concept, let's examine the message structure of a common communication protocol called Modbus RTU. A message using Modbus RTU protocol begins by specifying the station number. The station number determines to which device within your network the message will be sent. Next, we specify something called a function code. A function code is used to relate the data received to a separate set of internal registers. After this, the data that the message contains is specified, and the message undergoes an error check to certify that the data is valid. All right, so we know what communication protocol is, but what does this have to do with industrial automation? Well, let's say that we want to control the speed of a conveyor belt. The conveyor belt is driven by a motor, and the motor is controlled by a separate device called a variable frequency drive, or VFD. We want control of the VFD to be automated, so we're going to use a small computer designed specifically for automated processes called a PLC or Programmable Logic Controller. In order for the PLC to communicate with the VFD, they must both support the same communication protocol. In this scenario, the PLC will also need additional information from various sensors around the conveyor to ensure that operation is both safe and reliable. And in the event that something fails, or we need to make changes that the PLC can't account for, We'll need a device that can communicate with the PLC and display this information to an operator. This device is called an HMI, or Human Machine Interface. Because some components may be limited to just one or two methods of communication, it's important to select an HMI or PLC that supports a wide variety of communication protocols. This will allow you to both upgrade or replace components without worry, since your design is future-proof. Are you interested in HMI programming? Check out our website, wintechusa.com, for free development software, and then head on over to our YouTube channel for free technical tutorials. Thank you for watching.